25 frugal living tips to help you save money. Hi, my name is Rachel. I'm a solo mum to one. And in today's video, I want to give you 25 frugal living tips that you can do today to help you save money. So let's get into it. Number one is to hand wash your clothes. Now, I don't always hand wash my clothes uh, because I have a child and there just seems to be a lot of clothes. And if you've got more than one child, I'm sure there's even more clothes. And your laundry basket never seems to be empty. However, if I just need one or two items of clothing that I need to be washed straight away, I'll hand wash them. I won't put them in the machine for no reason. I would just hand wash those clothes and I will get them dry as quickly as possible. So hand washing clothes will save on the electric because your washing machine's not on, but it will also save on the water as well. So hand washing clothes if you want to and if you're able or two just hand wash one or two items then that is a way to save a little bit extra money number two is to line dry your clothes so rather than put them in the tumble dryer if there's something that's not uh, needed straight away then maybe you can line dry them now the weather is getting colder so it's a little bit difficult to put them out and get them dry however it's something that i've always been taught if the ground is dry the washing will dry if the ground is wet the washing won't dry that's now becoming a trend on TikTok that I thought everybody already knew, but obviously not. But line drying clothes will help you save money because you won't be using the tumble dryer and you won't be using extra power. If it is wet outside, then get an error, um, maybe a bigger one or a heated one because that's going to save you a little bit of money as well. One trick that I have been taught that if you have quite a lot of washing, put a dry bed sheet over the top of the wet washing and apparently that will help it dry i've not actually tried that let me know if you have and that apparently helps washing dry quicker i don't know how i don't know if it works but if you know how or you know if it works or not do let me know in the comment box below number three is to wear your clothes more than once if you've just been sat around the house not doing much and you've just got like this jumper on for instance and all you've done all day is sit around the house and just potter it's not smelly it's not sweaty why wash it just pop it back in the wardrobe and wear it again maybe once or twice you can wear it rather before you have to wash it and then that's going to save you a little bit more on the washing as well it's something that i do i wear my hoodies for about a week and then i wash them and then i i change hoodies but i only wear those hoodies around the house i don't wear them out and about um i only wear them around the house but i think this is my, my second or third time of wearing this jumper and it doesn't it don't smell so we're all good so i'll wash it after this next wear but wear your clothes more than once. Let me know if you wear your clothes more than once. But the one thing I do not wear more than once is my socks and underwear. I do change that every day. Obviously, I change my lower underwear because that's hygienic. Maybe I'll wear my bra two or three times before I wash it. But definitely my socks and my um, pants, I always change them every single day. Number four is to fix rather than replace. So before you have to go and replace something, see if you can actually fix it first. A lot of people say, oh, it's broken and they just throw it out. But it might be something really simple that you can fix. So say if your kettle blew, maybe it just needs a new fuse or something like that. Rather than actually go and just throw things out straight away, try and fix what you can before you have to replace it but frugal people also know when it is time to replace something and then they go and spend a little bit extra money on buying good quality items rather than cheap items to make it last a lot longer so if you can when something falls apart or something's not working see if you or a family member can fix it before you go and replace it this also goes with clothes so if you've got a small hole in your clothes sew them up rather than throw it away if your clothes are damaged or they've got a little tear or something like that, see if you can fix it by sewing it up, by putting the new hem on or whatever needs doing before you actually throw them out. If you need to throw that clothing item away or you need to throw towels away, maybe you can repurpose them for another item. I know a lot of people do repurpose old towels. They cut them up and use them as rags for cleaning or anything that they may need them for. So before you actually throw anything away, if you can't sell it, always try and sell it first, make a bit of extra money, see if you can repurpose it. Number five is to use until it's completely worn out. So I had a very old phone, a very, I think it was like an iPhone 5, I think. And I only upgraded it like two years ago. I had that for about 10 years. I literally went until it was completely worn out and I had to have it on charge constantly for it to work. 
when that started happening, then I upgraded, but I literally use everything I have until it is completely worn out before I go and replace it. I don't just think, oh, I could do a new one. I'll go and get a new one. I'll either fix it, I'll clean it, and I will completely use every bit of it until it can no longer work and I have to go and buy something new. I try and take care of it as much as possible so it lasts me longer, but use things until it's completely worn out before you have to replace it. Number six is to reuse jars. Now, a lot of people don't like using plastic anymore because there's a lot of things going around where plastic has got lots of chemicals and can go into your food. So people don't like using plastic and they like using glass jars. But glass jars can be a little bit more expensive than plastic, obviously, and people can't afford it. However, if you are using um glass jars for some kind of food item then reuse the jars so i have these candles i absolutely love these candles from b m my mum bought me this for my birthday um and i will burn this candle down and i will reuse the jars i've got loads of these jars and what i've done with them some of them have got hot chocolate in obviously i've cleaned them out fully before i put any kind of food in and i've got a few of them that have got tea and coffee in i've just put a label with tea and coffee on um i've also tried to save this one so i could put rice in it as well so my rice will go in this one but if people buy you candles or you've got big glass jars that people have bought you with a bit of food then reuse the jars for food items in your cupboard. Another great tip as well, if you've got plenty of these jars, because they're quite big jars as well, another great tip is to fill it with chocolates and sweets and give it as a gift for Christmas. If you've got some of those jars, then go and do that. It's a nicer way than just giving boxes of chocolate by putting it in a jar, which hasn't cost you anything because you've already bought the candle and you've used the candle, which is what you are paying for then you can fill it with chocolates and sweets or homemade goods, put a ribbon around it and give it as a Christmas gift if you wanted to. Number seven, I don't do this, I refuse to do this, but a lot of people do is to learn to cut your own hair. I refuse to do it. I do need a haircut, but I would rather go to a hairdresser. There are some things that I will be very frugal on and there's some things that I point blank refuse to do. And cutting my own hair is something that I refuse to do. So, let me know what are the things that you refuse to do that you still would rather pay someone to do it for you. Mine is somebody to cut my hair, but I would love to know, do you cut your own hair? Now, there's plenty of YouTube tutorials, especially when um, 2020 happened. A lot of hairdressers went online and taught people how to cut their own hair. So if you wanted to learn to do that skill to save you extra money at the hairdresser, then go and look on YouTube and learn to cut your own hair. I go to the hairdresser to have my hair cut, but I will actually colour my hair myself because that is a lot cheaper. For a £5 bottle of hair dye, I'd rather pay that than £90 to get my hair done at the hairdresser. So it might be the fact that you're like me, you pay someone to get your hair cut, but you actually do the highlights and the colouring of your hair yourself. But let me know what you do. Number eight is to pay cash where you can. I am starting to do this a lot more now than I have been before. Before I was just paying on my card, but now I pay cash. I get money out every single single week and I use that cash to get me through. One, it keeps me in my budget. I won't spend it if I don't have it. So I always make sure that I've got the cash on me and I'm only spending within my budget that I've got. And also you're not getting those extra charges. I know a lot of banks don't do extra charges, but some banks do if you do any transactions. So paying cash will actually work out cheaper for you. Let me know, do you prefer debit or credit cards or do you prefer to pay by cash? Let me know in the comment box below. Number nine, one of my favourites is to shop at thrift stores. I love a good charity shop. I love going into a charity shop and having a look around and finding some bargains. I found some great presents for Christmas, for birthdays. I found some great jigsaw puzzles that are like eight to 15 pound if I went to Amazon or a toy store. Um, but in a charity shop, I've managed to pick it up for two to three quid. So I love a good charity shop. You, I love buying some of my clothes from charity shops as well. Every time I bring them home, I give them a good wash um, before I even put them on. But getting clothes, getting toys, getting games, getting books, getting DVDs, all those different items you can get in a charity shop, even shopping for Christmas gifts in a charity shop was going to save you a lot more money. I absolutely love a good charity shop and a good car boot. Number 10, go to the library a little bit more. 
rather than buying books yes you can buy books at a charity shop and yes you can buy books at a car boot and a lot of them are really really cheap but if you want to read like a brand new book go and check your local library first you can always renew it if you haven't read it within the two weeks I love going to the library and one thing my son has asked to do this half term is to go to the library so that is something that we are going to go and do um, but going to the library hiring out books using their computers they now even hire out DVDs and movies so you can do those kind of things as well but going to the library is actually going to save you a lot of money because all of it is free now if you're like me and you don't keep your books I only keep my personal development books but all the other fiction books I sell on or I get rid of so if you're someone like me that does that why spend all that money just go to the local library and get them from your local library instead Number 11 is actually watch more DVDs than the streaming sites. Now, I have seen that the DVDs are coming back. A lot more people are starting to watch DVDs more and cancelling their subscriptions. I have a whole cupboard full of DVDs, Disney DVDs and action DVDs and romance comedies and Christmas films and I won't get rid of them because you never know if there's going to be a power outage or you can't afford a streaming site anymore. We have a portable DVD player that is always fully charged so if there was a power outage we could still watch a DVD because it's a portable one so once it's fully charged I can watch a DVD. And DVDs these days are really really cheap. You can pick them up in charity shops for like 20p. You can go to the car boot. The only thing I will say if you're buying a secondhand DVD is to open it and check that the DVD is actually the same one as the case because I bought my son a Minion DVD when we got it home it was Despicable Me Too and he was so upset because he's never seen a Minion movie so always check that the DVD inside is the actual DVD that you are looking to buy. Like I said before, you can actually hire out DVDs from the library as well so you don't even have to pay anything out for them at all and the dvds and movies that you used to love as a kid you can now introduce to your children and i'm sure they will love them so get in a dvd player a portable dvd player or a one that you plug in whichever one it suits you and watching a few more dvds and cancelling some streaming sites it's actually going to save you a lot more money Number 12 is to actually start playing board games. So a lot of people these days are either on their phone, they're watching streaming sites or they're playing games with like Nintendo Switch or Xbox or PlayStation. But rather than do that, why don't you actually have a family game night and use board games instead? It's so much fun. My son has just started getting into them and he absolutely loves them. Um, you good family bonding time and it's just such a fun activity to do and it's better than a game console where people can get really angry and sometimes it can be a bit too violent with some of them as well and if you don't know how to push all the buttons like I do and my son shouts at me but by playing board games it's so much more fun and I used to love them as a kid and I'm loving the fact that my son also enjoys them as well and my nieces are coming soon as well so we're planning on playing some board games with them too. And you can pick board games up really, really cheap from charity shops. Um, even if you go to the likes of B&M and Home Bargains, they have fairly cheap board games that you can play these days. Number 13 is to look for free events in your local community. So everyone likes to go and do something in half term holidays or at weekends. But usually your local community and the towns that you live in or the towns next to you that they you all the towns next to you, they usually have quite a lot of free activities that you can go to and have such a good time. Take your own drinks, take your own snacks, take your own food, take your own lunches if you're going over lunchtime to save you extra money. Just go and enjoy the atmosphere, soak up the fun, socialise and get outside and just enjoy all the free activities that your local community will put on. Number 14, when you are going shopping, go and look for the sales and the offers. If there is something you want to buy, see if there is a sale coming up in the store that you want to buy it. Go and look at top cashback and see if you can get cashback on things. Go and look on voucher codes and see if you can get a voucher to get some money off. Go and check Instagram and TikTok for the thing that you want and see if an influencer has a discount code for you. Before you go and buy anything, look for this next sale and look for a discount code or a voucher or an 
offer on that is happening in the near future. You might be able to wait a couple more days for that sale or that offer to kick in. Number 15 is to buy unbranded. A lot of people talk about this when you go to the supermarket rather than buy the brand items, go down to the lower shelves and buy the unbranded items because it is a hell of a lot cheaper. But this also goes with clothes. Now, my son's not at the age where he wants branded items right now. The only branded chocolate he likes is Cadbury. He doesn't like any other chocolate but Cadbury. But apart from that, he's not really a brand person right now, but I'm sure that will change as he gets older. So I can go and buy him unbranded trainers or from like Timu or Temu or whatever, however you say it, or Sheen, if that's the kind of thing that you like to do. You can go to, um, I have bought my son shoes from Amazon, from Asda, from Tesco, from Sainsbury's. I've gone and picked things up from local bargain stores because it's unbranded items and it doesn't cost me half as much. Number 16 is to start making your food at home. Making homemade food not only tastes much nicer, but doesn't have any extra additives in or hasn't got loads of junk chucked into it to keep it stored for longer making your own food at home getting your family involved in that is actually going to lower your costs be more filling and be much healthier for you as well if you can't do a lot of home making maybe you can do a couple of days a month where you just do a load of baking or you do a day where you batch cook a load of things or maybe when you are cooking a homemade meal you make extra to put away in the freezer so you've got another meal for another day but in the new year I will be doing a lot more on how to do meal planning batch cooking and different ways you can do it but still save yourself a lot of money Number 17 is something that I'm looking to do in 2025. I wanted to do it in this year, but I just haven't got around to it. But in 2025, it's something I want to start doing is to grow my own food. So grow my own fruit and vegetables. That's going to save me a lot more money in the long run. And it's much fresher and it's much healthier. Uh, so grow your own vegetables, grow your own fruit and save yourself a little bit of money. That way there are plenty of tutorials on line on all social media platforms so if you don't know how to grow your own food because i really don't then do go and check out some tutorials online and start growing your own food number 18 is to start making more things at home rather than buying it out so making your lunch before you go to work rather than going out and buying a meal deal buying a good thermal cup to make your own coffee to keep it warm and taking that on your walk to work rather than stopping at costa or starbucks every single day it's these little things that maybe if you don't do it every day but you do it two or three times a week it's still going to save you a little bit of money ideally it would be that you wouldn't go to a coffee shop at all and you just go there for a treat if you feel that's something that you're unable to do then maybe just once or twice a week you make coffee from home and the rest of the week you go and buy coffee from the coffee shop it's still going to save you a little bit of money every single month Number 19, when you want to go out for dinner or out for lunch, look for restaurants that do a free kids meal with a paying adult or do kids eat for a pound with one paying adult. Look for those restaurants if you're going out for a dinner or lunch with your family and that's going to help you save a lot more money in the long run because you're only paying a pound for your child's meal or it's completely free with an adult meal anyway. So before you go out for dinner or go out for lunch with your family, check the restaurants that do those kind of offers or just see if you can get a discount code from somewhere from like voucher codes or something like that and then you'll be able to get your meal a little bit cheaper. Number 20 is to stop working out at the gym and do home workouts. Now, if you go to the gym and you're lifting really heavy weights and it is something that you're not willing to give up and it's something that is really good for your physical and mental health, then continue to go to the gym if that works for you. I work out at home, one, because the gyms that I would like to go to are not open as early as I work out because I work out at 4.30 every morning to get a head start on the day. And plus I've got my son here and I can't just leave him here on his own because he's definitely not at that age yet where I go to the gym and I've got no one really to look after him and I don't want him to come to the gym with me. But also it's a lot cheaper for me to work out at home. Now I am actually a trained personal trainer and fitness instructor. It was one of the first careers that I had was a personal trainer and fitness instructor. So I know how to do my own workout programs. 
but I still do workout programs on YouTube. When I feel my workouts getting a bit stale or a bit boring, I will go onto YouTube and I will do some workout plans on there. Again, there's some that you can do, which are cardio, dance based. You can lift weights, you can not lift weights. There's lots of different exercises that you can do. There's lots of different workouts that you can do online that will fit your needs. Um, it's completely and utterly for free. So don't work out at the gym if you can and go and work out at home instead. Number 21, we're almost there, is to do a one big drive trip. That's what I call it. So when I go to my son's school and I drop him off at school, I usually go shopping straight after uh, because the supermarkets I go to are right next to his school. I don't drop him off and then go home and do some jobs, then go back and then go home and then go and pick my son up from school. If I'm out and about, if I'm going out, I will make a plan of which way to drive so that I am hitting all the shops I need in one go. So I try and look at everything that I need to do on a weekly basis and I see, right, I'm going out on this day to drop my son off at school. Can I go to Asda and Home Bargains on that day? Okay, I'm dropping my son off at school, but I need to go to Smith's Toys to get a Christmas present. So I'm going to go from the school straight to Smith's Toys and then I'm going to go home rather than go in and out and in and out, I save petrol by doing it all in one big journey. It saves me time and it saves me money by doing that. So if you are going to a bunch of shops, you need to do a load of shopping on one day, make a plan of your drive and see how you can do it where you're hitting all the shops in one go rather than keep going back and forth. Number 22 is when I'm teaching my son very young because it's a pet peeve of mine, it's leaving lights on leaving the lights on now my brother has been staying at my house not every single night but a day maybe two days a week he'll be staying at my house for personal reasons and when he leaves in the morning I then have to go around and turn all the lights off because I can't believe he leaves the bathroom light on the bedroom light on the hallway the hallway light on it's like wow there's just too many lights on um and so I'm teaching my son at a very young age that when you leave a room you turn the light off it's going to save you quite a lot of money because how many of you have teenagers or have children or have somebody in your life that likes to leave lights on let me know in the comments below if you've got one of those people now usually it's just my son and I so I'm teaching him young but when my brother stays here there's a lot of lights on so I go around and turn them all off so turning the lights off when you leave a room is going to save you a little bit more money now there is a video coming up in the near future or maybe early next year of how I save on electric and how I keep warm in the winter if you would like to see those videos and don't forget to hit that subscribe button number 23 I love this one. I recently learned this one and I think it's such a good thing. Buy your needs and ask for your wants. So all year, we buy the things that we need. So we need to keep a roof over our head. We need gas, we need electric, we need water, we need food, we need clothes on our back. So those are the things that we need to be able to have the life that we want to, to live in the way that we need to survive. But our wants have to come second. So when people are saying to you, what would you like for Christmas or what would you like for your birthday? Ask for what you want and not what you need. You can do all the needs throughout the year, but when it comes to those two days, ask the things that you want to have, not what you need to have. Number 24, last two, and they're very important ones. Number 24 is to be happy with less. You don't need a lot of different things in your life to make yourself happy. Be happy with less. Be happy with the minimal things that you actually need in your life, with a few of the little wants as well. You don't need to keep up with the Joneses. You don't need to have all the trends. You don't need to have the new iPhone or the new air fryer or the new tablet or the new TV. You don't need to have a 60 inch TV. You need a TV. So being happy with less is actually going to save you a lot more money and it will completely change your mindset. And number 25, I think is the most important thing, is learn to say no. We have a tendency to want to please others. We have a tendency to want to say yes to a lot of different things, even if it's things that we don't want to do, or even if it's stuff that we don't have in our budget, we'll say yes and then panic and try and figure it out how we're gonna do it, or God forbid you go into debt to be able to do it. Learn to say, thank you so much for offering. I just can't right now. 
There's other things that are more important for me to spend my money on. There are things that I need to save for, but I really appreciate the offer. Learning to say no to your children. Mummy, can I have this? I'd really like to get that for you, but I can't right now. But maybe we can put it on your list for your birthday or we can put it on your list for Christmas. Because I've also realised that if you tell your children to do that by their birthday, by Christmas, they no longer want it. So they want something completely new. So learning to say no to other people, to your children and learning to say no to yourself as well sometimes um not all the time i think we still need to spoil ourselves but sometimes like is this a necessary purchase or is this something i want i'm going to sit on it for 24 hours and see if i still feel the same way in 24 hours so learning to say no is going to help you save a lot more money I hope you got value from this video and you learned some great tips. If you have any more frugal tips, then do write them in the comment box below. I love to learn from you and I'd love to know more tips that I can share with other people. If you like this video, do give it a thumbs up and it will send it out to more people and hopefully they will get some value from it as well. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos from me. I hope whenever you're watching this, you're having a good morning, good day, or good evening and I will see you on the next one. Bye guys.